Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where I hope these videos are working. As far as I can tell they are. I've been having some issues on the PS4 with them for some reason, but so far it seems like even before and now that the PC stuff is fine, but we'll see. Um, but today I've decided to do the monumental decision, not squad, of, um, oh my gosh, look at this, no, 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 this. Look at this list! Ah, uh, that we, why is it, why is it sort, sorted alphabetically? By the newest. Um, anyway, we're gonna do the Omega DLC. Which is the Arya Talok one. Find her at Dock 42 on the Citadel. I think I have to actually, I do have to actually leave for this, so that kind of works out. <clears throat> I've got your briefing, Private. Let's fill you in before the squad arrives. The Alliance is posting us to an Ezo mining facility on Zani. It's a low gravity planet, toxic atmosphere. You'll be expected to maintain full survival gear. <laughs> Any questions? She's like, no. Are we playing security, Sergeant LMB? No, Private. We are not. Yeah, that's, uh. The sergeant's gonna rip into her, that's for sure. <clears throat> I had a friend in security at Sonic, and there was definitely Protean tech on Garbuck. I know the Valhalla threshold is Reaper territory now, but Protean tech could help the crucify. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm aware this is an unsecured channel. Y yes, understood. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Getting reamed. I was like, I thought he was over here. You finally made it off the Normandy. Glad I did. Even with the chaos of all the refugees, seeing so many ships in flight is comforting. Gets me thinking. Yeah. Hey, a Turian frigate. <laughs> I think that's the PFS Havenkov. What's one Turian warship doing at the Citadel? Looking for dry dock, I bet. She's seen battle. Look at the waiver in her drive core emissions. Alone, limping, looking for a haven. Maybe it would have been better to just go down fighting, like their families back home. Are you talking about the Turians or yourself? I should have been there. With Robert. But you weren't. You're alive. And that's a good thing. Maybe so. The lives of future generations rest on those Turian shoulders. On our shoulders. Nobody's given up. Not those Turians. Not me. Not you. If anyone can pull this all together, it's you. Now, Is that an Alliance cruiser? What's it doing here? That's the SSV London. Decommissioned years ago. Look, no guns. Refugees must have salvaged her from a shipyard. Geneva-class cruisers always had ESO cores like granite. People find a way to survive. Do whatever it takes to see another day. <sighs> Gotta let go. For real this time. The refugees here put up a memorial wall. They leave mementos of lost loved ones. I was thinking maybe... What's stopping you? Nothing. I mean... Let me think about it. Yeah... Uh, I do kind of hate sometimes how my, uh, like, the Renegade or Paragon stuff will interrupt stuff. Like, interrupt a conversation. Because, like, especially the Paragon ones don't necessarily need to interrupt, like, a conversation. When there's, like, shooty, rooty, tooty, shooty fun times to be had, I totally see that, but... Your suggestion to come out here was a good one, Commander. I needed this. Good, good, like, good, good guy. I get it. There's actually, uh, I, there's a very, I don't know, vulnerable moment for Shepard out here, at least in my mind. It's actually, it's after the entire Citadel DLC. Everybody meets up here, and you're just looking out at your ship. And I've always found a comfort, my Shepard, you know, me, whatever, have always found comfort in looking at the Normandy. So, I feel like we are kindred spirits in that. Cortez and I. Let me make sure. Map, 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 map. Oh, it's not showing me that he's he's over here. I think actually, shoot. Meridian, did I miss Liara? 
Conrad. Oh, hang on. Okay, maybe we hang on. Three. I was looking for Garrus because I don't see Garrus's name in out here either. But we could go talk to Arya because she has something to say after the after the shindig, after the coup attempt. Let me go. Let me go run find her really quick and see if she says anything. I think Liar will be fine. I'm not too worried about it. Watch, it's like actually something very plot important that she's over there for, and I'm like, I don't know. Recognized. One moment. Well, I won't stop a reaper, but an extra second of shielding can be life or death. So Vortex makes good shield capacitors? The best. They don't skip on plating either. I love it. Sounds like you want to get back out there to try it out. You know, a little. Can't wait to show it off to the team. Maybe I can take point more often now. Uh-oh, she's like, my plan backfired. No. Anyway, I was going to edit all that out, but we got to get the little ambiance conversations. Alright, let's see. Look who's here. The Blue Suns, Blood Pack, and Eclipse are in my pocket. I'll send them to war when you're ready for them. Is there anything on your mind? Nope. We'll talk later. I'm sure. Alright, editing all that out. Woo! <laughs> Uh, hopefully I do edit all that out, but just in case you just see me running around, I just came in, she didn't have anything to say, but I did want to catch that ambient conversation, so at least we have that. Like this one right here. That we already heard. Blah, blah, blah. Spectre status recognized. One please, moment, please. Now arriving at docking bay D-24. Have you discovered a way to run FTL spaceships without an ESO core, Private Talavi? No, ma'am. Then consider this a serious assignment. Intel's expecting a Cerberus raid. Cerberus? Cerberus? They're a problem? I thought we were fighting Reapers, ma'am. Give it a week. You could be. She's upset. The Private's upset because, um, <clears throat> I think she has a friend or something who's with Cerberus. Oh, hello? I forgot about this. Hey, I, hey. Well, I wondered where you went. What's up? I'm trying to wrap my head around what just happened. You sound angry. No, just not used to staring down the gun of someone I've worked with so closely. You shut! I went all you, went down and it's got me... You pointed the gun at me! Okay, talk to me. Let's have it. If I didn't back down first, I feel like you would have taken me out. <sighs> I don't want to be too nice, but oh, I don't know. I feel like the speculating is useless as beating around the bush. I think, yeah, I would have shot you in the leg or something, you know. Uh, let's try. Let's try and be nice. I trusted you, and I knew you'd come around. That's all that matters. Main thing is we stop the coup and Cerberus is off the Citadel. Yeah, but sometimes the way a thing goes down does matter. I mean, you're not wrong. Later when you have to live with yourself. Knowing that you acted with integrity. And it matters. You're talking about Udina. You think he would have come in quietly? Caden, he gave you no choice. You had to take the shot. I mean, you... You acted with integrity. Well, I saw you the could have shot him in the leg or the arm. All right. I don't Thanks. know why we have to shoot to kill. Look, Shepard, there's, uh, there's another reason don't. I'm here. Hackett offered me a position, but I'd turn it down in a second if there was a chance to join you in the Normandy again. Listen, we're, we're pretty low on the team, and I have to take who I can get, because they keep taking away all my friends from the second game, who I love dearly. 
So, yep, we're gonna bring Caden back, and we'll just shoot at you guys. are gonna get to see me freak out on him, at least me, not Shepard. Shepard's way cooler about it than I am, unless I change my mind this time, which I hopefully will. I might even look up what's actually said, not just, like, the, the, the generalization dialogue. Oh, I just bit my teeth. Oh, that was weird. That was weird. I'm getting, blah, emotional about this, <laughs> but just you wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say things to him. <laughs> Couldn't imagine meeting the Reapers without It's true. You. Thank you, Commander. Listen, and Shepard, you and your... I need you to know that I'll never doubt you. Yeah, you better not. I get you This back. is like seven times. Good to know. Welcome aboard, Major. Aye, aye, ma'am. No, oh, boy. Shepard, I got Anderson patched in. I was just getting him up to speed. Odina. Space Dad! That SOB was always power hungry. But this? He wasn't in charge. Cerberus was just using him to take control of the Citadel. What the hell for? I don't know. Not yet. Could have been a lot worse. Shepard stopped the assassination attempt on Counselor Valorn. Kyle. Mm. What? Your assassin. I'll have Hackett send you my reports on him. Short story, be careful, he said. Uh, I'm gonna go. I had to go close my door really fast. <laughs> I take it you two have met. In the books! Kaylee Sanders and I had our share of run-ins with him. I shot him in both legs once. Thought that might be the end of him. But he should have begun on Omega even stronger. Elusive man patch him up? That'd be my guess. Given what they were able to do with you and Grayson. Book guy! It's a safe bet Lang's even more dangerous now. Grayson's a book guy. I hope... I actually can't remember. They might be trying to tie in that stupid fourth book that was written that is non that is actually non-canon. Um I don't think I think Kai Lang shows up in the third one too. The fourth book is non-canon. It was written by somebody who just writes tie-in novels for a living and didn't work. The first three were written by the actual writer of Mass Effect 1 and 2. So Drew Carption. So those ones are those ones are canon. And Grayson I believe is in those ones. I didn't even finish, you know, I'm going to, yeah, because I didn't even finish reading the fourth one. It was so bad. It's, you should look up why it's bad. It's, it's, it's like, it, it's an invigorating, like, read to read about why it's so bad. But one of them is treating autism like a, like a curable disease instead of, like, you know, just like a, a way of existing. Or they do that whole thing, too, where, like, autism is they kind of associate with like Asperger's like they're like but like the version of Asperger's it's like pop popular media one where it's like you're a super genius or whatever you know and like uh yeah and it's just they they have Kai Lang be this like woman hater like I don't know it's a whole weird thing it's just I was like nope not doing it not reading it <laughs> I took out like a few kind of like I don't know like maybe a quarter of the way through and I was like nope I'm good. like even back in the day when I wasn't really, like, aware of, like, you know, the exact terminology to use for what I found problematic about the book, the way they treated the main character girl, who they were just like, oh, yeah, what, what, what it was is they were like, she got over her autism. That's what it was. She was like, yeah, she grew up, and she grew out of it. And it's like, you don't, you don't grow out of autism. <laughs> That's not how it works. Like, you know? And I was like, this is weird. This is weird. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go uh, all rene renegade on this guy. I don't care who he is. Next time we meet, he dies. Their attempts may have had at least one unintended side effect. I received word from the Asari counselor. They're requesting an update on. Yeah, well, it's too late. Lang has them scared. Enough to send help. Mm. Yes, the Asari and Solarians are both throwing in their support now. How's your progress on the Crucible? Good. Our estimates suggest we've completed nearly 50% of the known work. So quickly? Once decoded, the schematics are designed in such a way that allows our scientists to easily translate the information. It's not Prothean-specific. Hmm. Hmm. 
Are we any closer to understanding how to hmm, use it? Shepard says. That's still open for debate. Utilized in the right fashion, our scientists are convinced it can generate enough energy to destroy the Reapers. The question is, how will it dispense the energy? And in what form? You mean, how do you stop it from wiping us yeah. all Yeah. Exactly. We think the catalyst is the key to determining how to focus its energy, how to direct its energy at the Reapers alone. I'm working on that. You'll find the answer, Shepard. Yeah. I'll send you an update on the schematics. And in the meantime, we'll keep building. And we'll keep fighting. Make sure there's an Earth left to come back to. All right, Space Dad. You've always trusted me. I won't let you down. We're still in this. The gods of war haven't given up on us yet. Good luck, both of you. Anderson out. Commander, the Turian fleet is stretched thin. We need more support ships. And the quarry are willing to talk. Understood, sir. I'll look into it. Be careful. We've got reports of instability along the Geth border. Hack it out. Shepard, ah, do you have a maybe moment? Maybe I'm not doing the deal. A contact with Inasari High Command was insistent I pass on a distress signal to you. Something they can't handle? From what I can tell, they sent several commando squads to oh, investigate. None of them returned. I know this one. They didn't ask me directly, but... I think High Command is hoping you. That's almost help. more insulting. What's your take on this? That they wouldn't ask for help if it was. They wasn't didn't even important. ask. The colony's coordinates are on the galaxy map. I'll try to figure out what's going on. Like at least have the balls to ask me for help instead of just like, oh hey, like throwing it out there. But we have this big issue we can't seem to take care of. I'm pretty sure Masana. Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure that's Samara's mission actually, which we can definitely do. Having the Quarians potentially be available, but Rannoch is its own whole thing, its whole own quest. Um, and I would love to, because obviously, kind of spoilers, I guess, but you get Tally, obviously. It's Quarian related, you know, so you get Tally back. Um, and I think with her addition, that would be everybody we can actually have on the squad plus Caden. Um, I don't think there's anybody else. They kind of short, they kind of shrift you on this one, honestly. With pals. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say 50% on the way on the crucible is pretty, uh, pretty far. But we have reached the minimum total strength necessary to defeat the Reapers, but we'd still be idiots to do it now. La la la, Citadel Defense Force. Yeah, increase in refuge in the Citadel, depleted resources that might have otherwise gone to defense systems and personnel. It's true, but, like, what's the point of defending if there's no people to defend, you know? Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh-huh, by dealing with any repetitive problems that can't be delegated to BIs. It's concentrating on war-related problems and more serious crimes by focusing resources. The overall security of the Citadel has improved. I thought I did it the other way. I thought I was like, I thought I supported the not letting things go to crap and like even doing petty crime and stuff. Apparently not. They are making donations, schematics, yeah, yeah, yeah. Schematics of advanced biotic amplifiers from Grissom Academy has increased the endurance of a shower under fire. Yay! We already read that, I hope. Or I thought. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, so the Asari is new. They gain a perspective on how cultural shifts affect society, grasping larger contextual forces behind new proposals, and using these to springboard into hypotheses year ahead of their, years ahead of their time. They're the keenest scientific mavericks in the galaxy. The second fleet is lodged composed of fighters and frigates, embodying the Asari's hit and run mindset with a nimble swarm rather than a slower collection of vessels. The sixth. They have more dreadnoughts than any other collection in the Asari Navy. An almost superstitious dread has grown around its entrance into conflict. 
As any war with the fleet has never remained small. It was the sixth fleet that flew against the Rachni in the beginning of the Rachni Wars, and it was the sixth fleet that liberated the first colony under siege in the Krogan Rebellions. Unfairly or not, its service people have a reputation for being sober, serious, and humorless. Nevertheless, it's a good... And the Destiny Ascension, which we saved in Mass Effect 1. It would not be here, obviously, if we hadn't saved it in Mass Effect 1. It's the flagship of the Citadel Fleet, a powerful sorry dreadnought unlike any other vessel in the galaxy. Captain by Matriarch Lid... Lid... Lidnaya? Lidnaya? It was evacuated, but crippled lion fleets came in, and they were decimated, taking heavy fire, but they saved it. They, they repaired and upgraded it. Okay, thanks. Is that everything? Sweet. Okay. <laughs> Freak. Uh, I guess we could get started. I feel like we did a bunch of cutscene stuff, and we're like halfway through the episode now. Ooh, actually, you know what we need to do? A main mission has been done, and we need to go through and talk to everybody. That is extremely important. Bastards. And Udina, too. Son of a bitch. That's crap. Udina made a deal with the devil. He got what he deserved. Commander, I've got a lead on something interesting. Have you got a minute? Yep, talk to Commander, I found something you need to see. What have you got? A group of Cerberus scientists cut ties and fled. Perhaps they finally realized they were on the wrong side. We don't know what they were researching, but they were among the elusive man's top scientists. They could help build the crucible. Maybe we could recruit them. Lots of Cerberus people think they're doing the right thing. I know I did. And you were right, Commander. Whatever crimes Cerberus is committing now, I was on Horizon when the Collectors attacked. Really? That's right. You'll recall I mentioned growing up in the Terminus systems. I was visiting my family at home. Oh no. While the Alliance was running studies, you were saving me and my family. Oh, that's right. I saved them. Has the Alliance tried to make contact with the scientists? They've been unable to find them, but they're searching. As is Cerberus. I've been monitoring Cerberus communications. I've charted signal frequency from various Cerberus cells by location and cross-referenced known ship movements. You found them? Nah. I believe so. Yes. Nice work. Put it on the map and I'll give it a look. Thanks for your time. I'm like, I don't need the breakdown. Oh, I got email? Definitely. Always. Citadel interview. Your cabin is QZ? Ah, oh, priority Citadel shore leave. That's the DLC. So we could technically do that now, but we need to wait till after Renop because that's when we will have, um, Tali. <clears throat> I'm ordering the Normandy to dry dock in the Citadel for repair. She's seen a lot of action lately. Needs a little TLC. Small army of techs. We'll take care of the details. So get your crew out of there. You're all on shore leave. That's an order. One more thing. Admiral Anderson has an apartment on the wards. Head over there when you arrive. I hear it's a nice place. Spoilers! Space Dad gives me his apartment. It's actually super great. When we get there, I think I will actually at some point make a, was it like an ambiance video? Um, in there where like I'll just have like I will it'll be separate from the series obviously but I've I think I've said it before and I'll probably say it again but one of the very I did before I even knew ambiance videos were a thing when I was studying for finals in college I actually did my own recording of just Shepard sitting in that apartment hearing the cars go by and the little noises of like the waterfalls in the house like in the apartment and uh, I recorded like an hour, like a half hour, an hour of that, and just would play that on repeat in my, on my computer for myself. I never uploaded it, I just had it for myself. Um, while I was like studying for finals and doing projects and stuff like that. So before I even knew it, like ambiance videos were things, so and now I'd love to go back and like actually do like a high quality one and like a high, you know, you know, 1080p, 60 FPS, you know, a high quality video. Nothing like a 4K one, but you know, it'd be nice for myself and maybe to upload and see if people like it too. Or maybe there's already some out there. I don't know, but I'll make my own anyway. <laughs> so. Here's what we have on Kai Lang. Uh, he was 16, his credentials were faked. From the, he was in the Alliance military though. Reprimanded for taking medals from dead enemy officers. Sentence reduced in light of previous exemplary record. So he's a psychopath, like an like or a sociopath. I can never remember the difference, but taking like tr trophies from dead enemies. 
Recommended for the Alliance Medal of Valor, Kitesness, accepted into Interplanetary Combatives Academy. Receive. Oh, he did. That's right. He did receive the N7 designation. Dishonorably discharged and imprisoned after first degree murder. Yeah, he's a crazy person. Intel and Kai Lang's activities after joining Cerberus' body. What is known is that the elusive man arranged for Lang's escape from prison, employing him as an operator for the next 10 years. He is now believed to be the elusive man's most trusted agent, working as an infiltrator and assassin. His cybernetic modifications appear to be, include Cerberus's phantom class implants. Kai Lang is not smart, though. He's not like Miranda. He's a Miranda replacement for the, for the elusive man. Hey, wondering if you got some time in the near future. Nothing critical. Just want to chat. James Vega. From Adrian Victus. Commander Shepard. Cerberus just ambushed a Turian cruiser full of high-ranking hierarchy officials. The cruiser managed to escape. Its location was top secret. Cerberus couldn't have location of that ship without outside without inside information. And the only other person who knew the, crusade, the cruiser's position was Volus Ambassador Din Korlak. I've heard ugly rumors of a bounty out for his head. My advisors insist I can't bring these accusations against Korlak myself. I admit they're right. The Turian and Volus economies are tightly intertwined, and now isn't the time for the political crisis that would result, but the security of our fleets is at stake. I ask that you investigate Korlak in your capacity as a specter and find out if he is indeed a Cerberus Mole. I forwarded the location information on his last known location to the specter office in the Citadel. Prime Mark Victus. I swear Din Korlak is a familiar name. New article on Cerberus from the Alliance News Network. Elysium, an evacuation shuttle nearly destroyed as it attempted to escape the Reaper-occupied colony of Elysium, was reportedly saved after a lone biotic worker intervened. The shuttle was carrying children who drew higher numbers on the colony's evacuation lottery, meaning they were not eligible to board the first wave of shuttles leaving the planet. The sh their shuttle was saved when the biotic identified by authorities as Aresh Agdashlu. Is he the guy from Mass Effect? Nope, never mind. Oh, wait, wait, yeah. Uh, sorry. Engaged group of forces that were preventing it from taking off. He had a history of drug abuse and criminal activity and claimed to have survived a Cerberus camp on Paragi as a child. Witnesses said he killed several dozen Reaper creatures before he was overwhelmed, providing the shuttle just enough time to fly clear. This was Jack's um, mission in Mass Effect 2. Aresh was the only other survivor of the Paragi uh, Cerberus camp that she was in. Um, and by letting him live, he saves these. Otherwise, if you don't save him, you don't let him live. Um, this shuttle of children will be decimated on Elysium. From Jack. Ah, hey. Keeping on the short rotation. We keep them with lots of shore leave. Next time we're in the Citadel. Come by Purgatory. I already saw our Purgatory. Mm, I forgot about this. I forgot he sends me a letter. Okay. As soon as I saw the name, Siha. All right, let's go. Siha, I write this with a heavy hand, knowing you will read this letter when I am no longer able to share my thoughts. I am dying, Siha. Perhaps because of the differences between our species, I can hope that time will treat you with kindness and dim the hurt of my passing to faded recollections that a drug would forever remember with perfect clarity. Selfishly, however, I could not leave this world behind without leaving a piece of my I could not leave this world without leaving a piece of me behind that would never fade. I once accepted my fate, nothing remained but a shell destined to die. I only had to choose the when and how of my passing. I had refused to be confined to a bed, gasping horribly as my life beeped away to machinery I had no use for. I thought of my Erica, broken, bloodied, and betrayed by my absence. Of Cole yet small and afraid, bravely pushing at his eyes to stem the flow of tears I had entrusted to him to cry for both our sakes. The expectation to move swiftly to my end vanished upon uniting with your cause. You awoke me, Shepherd. My heart quickened its sluggish beat, if only to remain at your side and protect you with everything that I am. I was content to simply watch, take the time left given, and praise all I know for allowing me to walk my final days with hope and certainty that I am worthy of more than my cold isolation solely because you believed. I love you. If all else whispers back into the tide, know this for fact. By grace given me by the goddess Arashu, I bid her divine protection to you, my warrior angel, my Siha, to succeed in your destiny, to light your path through the coming darkness, to give you hope when all seems lost. I will await you across the sea. Oh, you should have seen me read this letter the first time around. <laughs> Jeez. I think this is something that my shepherd would either have 
on like a constant, like a constantly available file available to her or printed out somehow. Something to look at. Because like I said, I don't romance anybody in this game. My heart belongs, like my shepherd, my shepherd's heart belongs to Thane. And so we don't romance anybody. So we don't get that buffer of having somebody to hold necessarily when the times get tough, you know. There's nobody there necessarily. The only one I have is Garrus as like best friend. But sometimes that's not quite enough, you know. You need some that intimate lover to like hold your hand, you know, or something or to hold, give you a hug or to love you when everything seems like it's just a void. So <coughs> she would have this in those times to look at and to think about. And this also definitely affects how I see the very end of the game. So Oh, see you across the sea, Thane. Yep, from Diana. The networks are going to wall to wall with coverage on the attack on Citadel. I was asking you questions. Can I get an hour? I think you need your cabin rather than the conference room so we don't get interrupted. I heard you need the counselor personally. If you need some time alone or don't want to talk about it, just say the word. Blah, blah, blah. Game night from Samantha. Thank you for taking the time to speak with the civilian. I'd love to see how Commander Shepard kills time between missions. That's a... Why don't you give me a call if you'd like to grab drinks in your cabin? I promise a fun night of fun and games. She's bold. I'll give her that. You can just be, it can just be friendly, and I will. I'll, I'll have her up for games. She, I think we play chess or something, because she's a nerd. <laughs> Is it, okay, not beeping at me, but let me, was there, not here? Uh, it used to be over here where you could change your, everybody's, what you would call it, their setup, their get-ups, their get-ups. <laughs> So servers wanted to go into politics, huh? Nice job shutting those assholes down. Didn't you used to work for those <laughs> assholes? Something about leather. <laughs> I worked for servers when they were vigilantes helping the helpless. Now they're a little too mainstream. <laughs> and <laughs> and you the important thing is that you kicked their ass. <laughs> and Caden's back. Kay. He even remembered the first rule of serving on the Normandy. Don't shoot the commander. <laughs> I do love Joker. I did have a crush on Joker when I first played. I did think it would be fun to romance him, and I still do, but I'm not going to get in the way of robot love. <laughs> but I love something about leather seats. It's true. That's what he says. He's like, they even have leather seats. Seats. They breathe. I remember that. Go easy on Caden. He's been through a lot. Yeah, like drawing a gun on a <laughs> superior officer, nearly getting the <laughs> That's not going to look good on the yearly performance review. Okay. Joker, be nice. You don't have to, though. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Just rip him a little bit. Hello, Shepard. What's on your mind, Edie? The destruction of the Reaper on Tachunka. It is rare for a technologically superior force to be destroyed by an inferior one. Yeah, so now all we need is a gun that fires thrush. Yes, off. please. She's... That was a joke. I'm sorry, Shepard. I was contemplating. <laughs> she was. The Reapers are more fallible than they proclaim. Despite its best efforts, the one on Tachunko was destroyed by a worm. This has caused me to reassess the probable period of time before I am non-functional. You're worried about dying? In a sense. My processing power is consumed with calculations to help us combat the Reapers. But I can run those scenarios with the rest of the crew. May I ask you another question that troubled Jeff? Here we go again. I'm sure he loves what this. What is the purpose of synthetic life? He, he loves, he loves getting, hearing my response to the questions that make him stumble. I mean, I don't know, to be honest, like, I mean, it's made for, you can, you can make something for a purpose. But that doesn't mean, like, once it has its own sentience, like, it can do whatever it wants, you know? Like, that's the purpose of being alive, is doing the best you can in my mind you know like I, I think of Frankenstein too right where like Frankenstein wasn't necessarily made for a purpose except as like proof of concept essentially um well the Frankenstein's monster I guess rather it's not Frankenstein um but 
like once Frankenstein, the dog, Dr. Frankenstein, realized what he made, he was like, oh my gosh, freaked out, ran away, and ran away from his responsibilities of creation, and blah, blah, blah. And anyway, the monster had to figure out what it, what it wanted to be, what it wanted to do, which was an incredibly difficult thing for it to do. And also, it's a really good book. I should actually read that one again. I really enjoyed it. It's not that different from organic life. A free-willed synthetic chooses what it wants. I love the animations. But the purpose of organic life is to preserve itself long enough to replicate copies of its genes in succeeding generations. Fair. My purpose is not so clear. The other successful synthetic life forms that I have examined for comparison are the Geth and the Reapers. I guess propagation is one way to look at it, but how do you propagate when you don't create organically, right? You just just propagate through code, I guess? I don't know. Reproduction isn't all there is. We find meaning in the work we do. Good deeds we accomplish, love. I see. I will search my files on the biographies of humans to see if prominent figures follow the pattern you suggest. It appears many humans did in fact do so. That was quick. Gotta love quantum computing. Shepard, I will alter my processing power to give priority to your stated goals. Duty, altruism, love. Wait, wait, you're just gonna turn <laughs> yourself good? Can you do that? <laughs> it should take some time. If I have further questions, I will speak with you again. Thank you. I actually really love the way that they've handled, like, the idea of, like, quantum computing gaining... Like, not gaining sentience, but gaining, like, a moral code with Edie, where, like, it's kind of just how it is for humans in a way, right? Where there's the whole, like, nurture versus nature environment, where for me, like, obviously, I think I've mentioned it before on Horizon Forbidden West, like, you can be born with, like, a predilection for, uh, like, a capacity for intelligence, right? Like, a greater capacity for intelligence than maybe, like, the average person or something, you know? So genetics can be facilitated that way, but it's your n nurture, for me, that offers a lot more, um to who you are as a person in a, in a lot of ways. Um, then again, like my friend who was adopted just recently, well, my my friend's husband who was adopted recently found his um, biological family and my friend, his wife, has noticed, she's like, he, has, he didn't know who they were ever growing up, but she sees similar mannerisms, similar uh, like facial expressions, similar like hand gestures, even though they didn't know each other right then there is there is something to that right we're like a genetic blueprint of sorts but i do think that nurture has like you could be you could like like we said earlier you could be born for something but if you're raised in a different way or you see a different option and like you decide to take a different path like and you you in, expose yourself to different environments different ideologies like your whole entire path can change you know um but Anyway, I just think the way that they've dealt with Edie, I think, is fascinating, like, with the whole, yeah, like, morals, like, AI, quantum computing, figuring out how to be a moral individual and how she has a good example of people around her, whereas, like, if she was in, like, a vacuum or, like, was treated poorly, like, she could become an evil AI very easily, you know, so, and she actually did, I think we find out later on in this one, but she did come, I don't know if I've mentioned it in this one, but we mentioned it in Mass Effect, I think I spoiled, like, the, a spoiler warning in Mass Effect 1, but here's another small spoiler warning for Edie, um, but she was actually originally the moon VI, the, the virtual intelligence, not an AI, that we had to destroy, essentially, way back in the day in Mass Effect, I believe it was Mass Effect 1, um, that had gained, like, semi-sentience and uh, was, like, going going insane. Um, and uh, Cerberus got a hold of that and modified it and made Edie. So, anyway, this episode's going on for a long time. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Risa Comito, my sapling to your patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Adam, my treat your patron. Thank you so, so much for your support, my friend. I very much appreciate it. And an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my treat tier, my forest tier patron. <laughs> and so, you, thank you so much. You've gone above and beyond in your support with commenting and Patreon support and everything. And I just cannot say enough how much I appreciate it. So thank you all again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.